Okay, so now with the remaining sugar here, I'm just going to keep cooking it. Keep watching the temperature. And what I'm looking for is a really, really dark color, so we'll just let that keep cooking. So this part takes the longest, just trying to get it to the right color. Uh, you will be here for a while. And it's important though that you stay around because if you walk away, um, you could just have this shoot way up past the temperature that we're trying to hold it at. Um, and you could also burn it as well. And you want to keep stirring this and just keep an eye on it. Sit down with a book or whatever. Doesn't look like it, but the uh, the colors actually started to change now. Um, it's going from a clear to a kind of a yellow straw color. Um, so you really want to start keeping a really good eye on it at this point because it will start to change quickly. This here is about uh, amber. So it's starting to get a little bit of a, a red tint to it now, which is good. Um, still got a little ways to go though. So now it's really starting to get darker and more red in color. Uh, and you can smell the sugar now. In the clear stage there's not much of an, an odor but once the sugar starts to caramelize uh, the smell gets pretty strong. When it starts to get dark like this the temperature for whatever reason likes to, to ramp up fairly quickly so you just want to make sure you keep an eye on it. Keep adding water now and again to just keep that temperature down around 260. So now it's a nice dark red color. Uh, we're almost to the color I'm trying to get to, so almost done. So I was making a, uh, a Belgian Duval. This is probably where I would stop in the color. It's a nice red color, um, a lot of caramel flavor, and a little bit of uh, burnt sugar. So this is uh, almost where I wanted it. You can see how it's pretty, pretty dark in color. I'm going to let it go for a little bit longer though. Okay, so at this point I'm just going to go ahead and let the temperature shoot up to 300 degrees, which is um, hard crack. Um, and the reason I'm doing that is I'm not going to be using this sugar for several days, so I want to make it make sure it's easy to store. And um, so by going up to hard crack, once this cools down, it'll be rock solid like uh, rock candy. Um, the earlier sugar that I had, uh, where I stopped where it was clear, because I didn't take that to hard crack, it's, it's kind of more like... Um, really really thick molasses um, so I'm putting that in the freezer so it'll harden up some but I'm going to be using that tomorrow uh, so it's not as, as important uh, I could have also taken it at that point and mixed in some water and turned it into a, just a syrup um, but uh, I, I actually like it when it's in, in chunks especially since I'm not 100% sure of um, the weight so I'll be able to take the those pieces and uh, pull them out of the freezer and stick them on a scale and actually weigh out two pounds uh, and then the rest of it will end up going back in with this dark sugar okay so once you stop adding water to this uh, and stirring it, it it goes up in temperature fairly quickly uh, we're almost at hard crack, so what I'm going to be doing now is, is taking it off the heat and pouring it 
into a mold. Okay, so now I have um, all the sugar into the molds. I'm going to take this and stick it in the refrigerator, let it cool down, it'll solidify, and once they're nice solid blocks, I'll take them out, uh, wrap each of the blocks individually in wax paper, and stick it in a Ziploc bag, and that'll just sit fine until I'm ready to make my beer.